We had a look at understat.com yesterday where we're given the expected goals for various matches. A fair representation of how the match went. Perhaps better than the actual score. Here, we're going to take a closer look. So, if we just click on the home symbol, we're given more information. So expected goals is the new revolutionary football metric, which allows you to evaluate team, which allows you to evaluate team and player performance. In a low scoring game such as football, final match score does not provide a clear picture of performance. That's why more and more sports analytics turn to the advanced models like XG, which is a statistical measure of the quality of chances created and conceded. Our goal was to create the most precise method for shot quality evaluation. For this case, we trained neural network prediction algorithms with the large data set. Greater than 100,000 shots with over 10 parameters for each. On this site, you'll find our detailed expected goal statistics for the top European leagues. So that's great. They've done all the hard work for us. They're looking at the main leagues. They're using machine learning via neural networks. They're taking into account many parameters. And they're describing what it is that they do. So we can see here the expected goals and the actual goals are related, but they're not the same. It does more. So if we go back to our matches, where yesterday I just commented that the expected goals was more like one all, we can click on it and get details. So here are the two teams. The sc score was 3-0. But the expected goals were closer to one all. Below, we have the various incidents that occurred during the match. And this is a player by player breakdown of the various incidents that occurred. So here we have West Brom players and this tab is for Chelsea. We have a row for each player. What position they play, how many minutes they played, how many shots they took. Goal scored, key passes, assists, expected goals, expected assists. So here we have one shot and it had an expected goal of 0 0.02. Here we had one shot with an expected goal of 0 0.07. So that was probably a, a shot. That was probably a shot from outside the box. 
quite far away, not a very good chance. Here we have 0 0.16, but that is from two shots. Three shots led to 0 0.84. So if we add up all the expected goals, player by player, we end up with our total of 1.23. These are corrections. The difference between what actually happened and the expected result. So for Claudio Jakob, we had 0 0.02 expected goals, but they didn't actually score a goal. And so the difference between reality and our prediction is 0 0.02 and in the end our total was 1.23 that's how many goals we expected to happen based on the shots but actually three goals were scored so there's a correction factor of 1.77 so from this, we can get a better picture of what's going on. We've been told that they're using a neural network. They have 10 parameters, over 100,000 shots of data. And we're actually given a breakdown of how they came to their result. So when they said, expected goals of 1.23, it was due to these components. And likewise, we have the data for expected assists. So now we have a better picture of what Understat is doing for us. We still need to figure out ourselves how we can use this. What's the value of it? I can understand if I was the manager of, of a team, then I'd be trying to optimize my expected goals. I would be looking at this information and going, okay, that I need to sort that out. But does this help give a better picture of of who the best team is in order to do that we need to have historical results we need to know that how well did expected goals or expected points identify who the best team was in previous seasons so how can we do that if you're paying closer attention than I was, we can actually look at different seasons. So West Brom are obviously not in the Premier League this year. And this is 2015. So that shows that we can click on a particular season. So 2014-15 in this case, and see how the expected points behaved in various seasons. So if I just go, I had a ch chart before, so I'll just click. So in this season, Chelsea won and City came second. So I'll just click on charts. And in that season, Chelsea were ahead on expected points oh I wanted expected points because I'm trying to see how useful that is so there's expected points so Chelsea were 
consistently ahead on expected points. Arsenal were actually pretty close. In the end, um, I think Arsenal came third. But they actually, their underlying numbers were good. But if you just f- followed Chelsea, if you used the expected points, they consistently were saying that Chelsea were the best team, Chelsea are playing the best football, and they ended up winning the league. So there was no uh, surprise in 2014-15 the best team won but we can look at multiple seasons to kind of get a feel for how expected points performs or behaves so let's look at two or three and mainly just to see whether there was any surprise so in this season Leicester won and Arsenal came second I want to look at expected points so uh, this is sad because I am an Arsenal supporter and that basically Arsenal were ahead on expected points for the entire season. And so, deserved to win. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. So, this shows that expected points aren't always right. In fact, last year, or the last chart we looked at, I think, Arsenal were second on expected points, but came third in the league. So, okay, um, expected points doesn't mean what actually ends up happening. So, I mean, here Arsenal were consistently top. So, if I was, so if I was using expected points, I'd be looking at this and going, okay, Leicester might be ahead. But Arsenal are going to catch up and end up winning. But that wasn't the case. Let's look at one more season. Since this, that was basically what I ne- was. That was basically what I was looking for to see. Did did you end up with mismatches? Did you end up with seasons where one team had? The most expected points, but another team, but uh, but another team won it. This year, Man City had the most expected points, but Liverpool could win it. That wouldn't be unusual. In this season, I'll have to look up. Here. I'll have to look up here again. Oh, this was oh th- this was just last year. So, City won. Liverpool came second. But if we look at the expected points, City were ahead nearly all season. They were very close during this period. And to be fair, they were close in reality right till the end. So, it's not obvious what the added value is. If a team is getting higher expected points, that doesn't mean that they, they're going to win. I mean, Arsenal had higher expected points, but Leicester won the league. In fact, in this case, we have... Chelsea came third. What actually happened? Oh, Chelsea came third. Then it was Spurs and Arsenal. 
and in expected points it was actually United and Spurs and then Wolves followed by Arsenal so I hadn't I hadn't realised that Wolves had done that well so we've looked deeper into the expected goals we got to see that they have a neural network and all that kind of thing we got to see that we get a detailed breakdown of the components that led to the final expected goal number where we saw player by player how many shots they had and what their contribution was to the expected goals and expected assists but we still have to figure out what the value add is from this for example does it correctly predict who the worst team is so just a quick look here this was last year the bottom teams were Brighton Fulham and Huddersfield okay so Brighton, Fulham and Huddersfield and what in the actual table what happened it was Cardiff, Fulham and Huddersfield so it got the bottom two correct that Fulham and Huddersfield were the 19, were 19 and 20 matches with what the expected goals were saying or expected points Brighton and Fulham was the wrong way round and I'll just look at uh, one more season just to see again oh so what actually happened it was Hull Middlesbrough Sunderland Hull Middlesbrough Sunderland And here we have bottom was hull, which is what actually happened. So that's a match. It was Swansea and Sunderland. So did Middlesbrough. So Middlesbrough were fourth from bottom according to expected points while in reality it was in the other way around it was Hull Hull Middlesbrough Sunderland Yeah, so Hull were expected to do even worse. Middlesbrough were expected to be okay. Swansea were expected to be relegated, but were not. It is very close, typically, in the end. In the relegation battles, you know, often uh, depending on the last day, where a draw or a sudden penalty can dramatically change things. So it's just looking to see how this analysis with the expected goals could be converted into actionable results, as it were, from my betting point of view. This was an unexpected diversion I hadn't planned on looking into expected gold even last week but it was something that was at the back of my mind next I want to look at this paper where it reviews multiple approaches to predict football